Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you some information and showing you how to set up BIOS files in RetroArch. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing we're going to be talking about BIOS files is what they actually are. A BIOS file is basically system information or similar to an operating system that allows us to reproduce how the original system would work. So a number of consoles and therefore a number of cores in RetroArch require BIOS files to be able to run effectively and efficiently. The first thing I'm going to be showing you is how to find and locate to where your BIOS files are installed. And I'm going to be showing you how to change the directory so you can actually change where they will be installed. So what we're going to be doing is opening up RetroArch. We're going to be coming down to the settings option right here. We're going to be coming in here and we're going to be scrolling all the way down until we see the directory option. We're going to be selecting this and the very first item here is going to be system slash BIOS. And here we can see the exact location of where our BIOS file should be located for RetroArch. So by default, it's going to be RetroArch slash system. However, you can feel free to come in here and change this to any other location if you would like. For me, I always leave it in the default location. It's easy to refer back to this place if I ever need to change anything, but you can feel free to experiment with that here. The next thing I'm going to be bringing you to is the RetroArch website or more specifically the documentation. And here we can get some more specific information on what cores need BIOS files and the exact naming structure you should give these BIOS files so we can actually use them efficiently in RetroArch. What we need to do is come to the RetroArch website. We're going to need to come to the help tab and we're going to be opening up the docs tab. In this case, we're just going to be opening up in a new tab. Once this opens up, we're going to be coming to libretro docs here. We're going to be opening up the fur users option. And here we're going to be opening up core library emulation. And here we're going to see a list of all the different console manufacturers and companies that have cores inside RetroArch. So one console I know for a fact that has BIOS files necessary is PlayStation 1. So what we can do, for example, is come to the Sony emulation. We can select the core that we're trying to use. In this case, for example, let's say PCSX rearmed. We can select this core and here we can get some information on the core, some of the background information, some of the extensions you use, features, etc. However, most of these cores will also have a BIOS section where it'll tell you what the required BIOS files are and it will give you a file naming structure and a description that will explain exactly what these BIOS files are for. So for the main difference in the PlayStation 1 is just the version number, or in this case, just the console type you're trying to play from, whereas other cores and consoles will actually split this up based on region. A good example of this is the Sega CD or more specifically Pico Drive. You can see that different BIOS files are required for different regions. So you have a European BIOS file, you have a US BIOS file, and you have a Japanese BIOS file. So depending on the core you're trying to play and depending on the type of games you're trying to play with this core, you might need specific or even multiple BIOS files to make sure you cover all of the system bases. So the next question is how do I actually retrieve and get these BIOS files? Well, there's a number of ways to do this. One is actually dumping the BIOS from the console that you already own. This varies dramatically from console to console, although I'll try to leave some links in the description down below that will help you put in the right direction, but you will basically need to Google your specific console. So in this case, let's say Sega CD, how to dump Sega CD BIOS, and then you'll have to go through the steps of this. Some consoles are easier to do than others. The second method, of course, is to just download these BIOS files from different sites on the internet. I won't be leaving any link in the description down below, but of course, the usual Google searching here will put you in the right direction, and they're relatively easy to find without too much difficulty. So now to actually put these BIOS files files inside RetroArch. I would first recommend just making sure RetroArch is closed. I believe you can also do it when it's on, but it's always best practice in my opinion to close these applications before affecting any of the files inside. From this point, what we need to do is locate to where our BIOS files are located. So in this case, I have my PS1 BIOS here. The naming structure is exactly the same as the documentation mentioned before, and it is the scph1001.bin file. Most of these BIOS files do come in .bin formats. So I have my BIOS file right here. On my second file directory here, I have my system folder, which is set up as the BIOS BIOS location for my RetroArch. And you can see I already have a number of different BIOS files already located inside here. To bring your BIOS files across, we simply drag and drop and just drop the file inside. Now, a couple things to keep in mind here is you cannot add zipped files here. The files already need to be extracted and in the correct format. As you can see, none of these are in any zipped formats. They're all in the original .bin files. And some cores will actually create folders here and add their own kind of BIOS information that you don't need to worry about. For example, Dreamcast will do it by default. I didn't actually have to add anything here for my Dreamcast core and the same goes for Mupin64+. Plus. But all of these other .bin files I added here manually. And overall, setting up BIOS files in RetroArch is relatively easy. You just need to make sure you read the documentation and then just find and locate to the different BIOS files that you need for the consoles that you want to play. But anyway, guys, that should give you a nice general bit of information about what BIOS files are in RetroArch, how to use and set them up, and how to find the information on what you're actually looking for and the file naming structure you will need. This can be a little bit overwhelming when you're new to RetroArch, but thankfully, I do have a number of videos breaking down all the pre 
previous consoles on RetroArch. So if you need any specific help, feel free to go to one of those videos. Hopefully it'll put you in the right direction and you can leave comments down below around the specific videos and I'll try help out as much as I can. Overall, setting up RetroArch isn't that difficult once you can break it down into little steps. You can read the documentation and of course you have videos like mine out there to hopefully help you and guide you in the right direction. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to set up and use BIOS files in RetroArch. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.